So, I had two videos on this subject on different channels. Both kind of sucked. I went through several rewrites on this subject matter. But you know what? I might as well present this in a way that is more of a, hey, here's how I do shit, rather than, hey, you can do the thing that I do, because I know people do shit differently. There will be that one area that's kind of a tutorial type of deal for those that do want to do the same type of work progress that I do. But for everything else within this video, it is just explaining of how I do shit. Hello everybody, this is ChivaJC of YouTube. And I'm going to talk about how I go about when making a visual novel style series. Yes, I explained the history of why I went into this field to begin with, but I never properly explain, at least on this channel, on how I do shit. And while I am the first asshole that makes this type of content continuously, both within and outside of the fanime community, I can take a pretty good guess that I'm probably not the first outside of my usual circles. And just to be sure, I'm probably gonna have a cameo explaining of what they do when it comes to their visual novel style story, just to have people know that my way is not really the only way. Anyways, enough stalling. Let's get down to business, starting with... So, after making like the main refs, or even concept arts for my characters, I decided to dive deep into making these sprites for my characters. Up until like 7 guidances to wishful safety, we'll get to that, I usually do have body sprites. However, you can't chuck it up to the fact that even regular visual novels do have body sprites anyways. Plus, I had to work with Windows Movie Maker before I made the switch to HitFilm Express. Which is free, by the way. And the reason why I say Seven Guidances is kind of the exception is because I wanted the sprites for the characters as full refs. The previous refs were either concept art or old refs for something else. And trust me, both are pretty much rough around the edges. Plus, it was getting close to the starting point of the 2019 Weekly Challenge, which I decided to participate last minute because... Uh, yeah, what I was originally planning did not go as well as I hoped. I mean, don't get me wrong, it worked out well in the end, but still. And if you're wondering if I do any other poses besides the default pose... <laughs> Not really. <laughs> Look, it was a different time, and the way I shaped back then will make doing multiple poses absolutely awful for me. Same goes for doing colored lines as well. I know it may sound like a bit of a cop-out, but that's kind of the way I roll, folks. Anyways, now that I got that out of the way, let's move on to... Alright, I know that this may or may not sound monotonous and tedious to y'all, but it is worth noting since this is the type of shit I do. But yeah, once I got the main sprite down, it's time to go to the face. Side note, my bitch has usually keeps the nose or the line that indicates that there is a nose on the same layer as the main sprite, just to make it easier for myself. But with something like the eyes, eyebrows, and the mouths, they usually go on to, like, separate layers. Don't worry, I have a folder layers for these things nowadays. Just so they will keep things organized, because it will be a bloody hazard if there aren't any folder layers. I should know. For mouths, I have two sets of open and closed mouth. One set that is like smiling, and the other for frowning. Everything else could be just extra. For eyes, I have four pairs. One for open, and the rest for closed. For closed, there are 
are three ways of indicating closed eyes. There is the upwards, downwards, and right in the bloody middle. I know that this might sound pretty useless, but believe it or not, for me, there's a point to them. I'll put the examples on screen so you can see that I could use them for moments like... Happy fun times to... <laughs> I don't even care. To... I just wasted a hundred dollars on paper towels. What is my life? These are just basically examples, but I hope you get what I'm trying to say. That said, there are points where I do have extra eye expressions for comedic purposes. And for eyebrows, I have three sets at least. One for mad, sad, and raised eyebrows. One half of each set is for open eyes, while the other half is for closed eyes. Now, outside of those three principles I've talked about, I also have some extra shit outside of that, such as blushing and the anime sweat drops. Why are you looking at me in such disappointment? I mean, I understand, but come on! You knew what you're getting yourself into when you continue on watching this video, so really, you played yourselves. A bit of a quick aside to address my first two steps, but obviously, my ways of making sprites isn't the best way, and if you feel like you want to do something like I do, but want to be a little bit more complex, Chris Manson made a good video on how to make visual novel sprites. Yes, it's more in the context of when making a proper visual novel, but it mainly focuses on the art aspect and not the coding aspect. So that's why I recommend watching that video. So after I get my character sprites done, as well as saving the project file for said sprites in case of a need more later, it's time for the BGs, CGs, and VN frames. I think the majority of the internet knows that BG stands for backgrounds, and those are basically self-explanatory. I just make whatever background works for the series, as well as having a background artist for a couple occasions. I know for the backgrounds I've made, they're not exactly the best backgrounds in the world, but they manage to exist. As I said, self-explanatory. Now, I should probably explain on what the fuck is a CG. Well, CG stands for computer graphics, and in regular visual novels, they are mainly used for special scenes. Like, for example, if you're playing a typical romance visual novel that's rated T for teen, you're probably gonna guess that whichever girl you have to play a character be with have one of those confession scenes. And those are usually CGs. They are what you typically call CG scenes. Anyways, why the hell am I even talking about this? Well, folks, it's because I have CGs for my own shit. And while I had a different artist who worked on them for Penalty Hill about more than one by the time Episode 5 came out, I know that starting on the original Careflops, I started making my own CGs. So I could test some waters. And while they are mediocre looking back on them, it was sort of a starting point back in like 2015. And like with the backgrounds, they managed to exist. Plus, there are CGs in my recent work that look like an improvement compared to how I started in 2015. Also, I call them CG frames because my own terminology is bullshit. Anyways, now that we got that out of the way, let's talk about VN frames. Now, VN frames are basically frames with my VN sprites and majority of the time backgrounds. Whether I want a character to change expressions, have their mouths move so then they could talk, or have a bootlegged way of having a character move, that's how I ran this method. Now I know what you're going to ask. Jesse, why the fuck are you making frames with your sprites? You have hit film! You, why not just make a composite shot and use track motion with the sprites? Well... There are two reasons. 
Number one. As I said earlier, when I started, I used Windows Movie Maker. Track motion was not a thing in that program. Number two. I've used this method when working with this format for like half of a decade. I feel that I work better with it than the times I've tried to use track motion. Plus, for me, I work faster with it, ironically. Which is why half of my series are like this, and a good amount of times I was able to finish them, at least with sour candy filled donuts and Nemo Mia the Chaotic Hero. Hell, the reason why Penalty Yellow Belt and Penalty X took as long as it did is because of VA troubles, as well as some personal shit that I'm not gonna get into. Besides, that's a can of worms for another therapy session. And as for Seven Guidances and why the fifth episode for that took so long, it's one of those biting off more than I can choose situations since I did have animated action scenes. And it was a weekly series for a weekly challenge. I, I, I don't know. <sighs> I don't know why I thought it was a good idea to make an action series for the weekly challenge. Like, yeah, I had animators helping me out, but I know I have to wait because, surprise, surprise, animation takes a while. And on that note, that is also another story for another video. But yeah, I just make VN frames because, hey, it works out for me. Call me an old fart, but that's the way I roll, folks. Yes, we are going straight into video editing. Listen, audio editing is very versatile for anything, regardless if you're doing a visual novel style series or an actual animated series. Um, there, there's like a lot of ways to do audio editing. I just do it the old fashioned way. Anyways, now that we got that out of the way, let's begin talking about this. In the Windows Movie Maker days, back when it had the stupid live format that I was introduced to, I just insert the frames into the program because, holy shit, the, the program not have that little area where you can insert your media in. And while it felt like no issue at the time, it was a hassle looking back. It doesn't help that I had to insert the frames before I had to insert the audio. Yeah, as you can tell, it was a fucking nightmare. Now, in the HitFilm era, there is a media tab to insert your frames into, so thankfully, that's a thing. Unfortunately, if I'm being for real for a moment, I'm not exactly a fan of how it goes from 0 to 9 when it comes to file names. And if I were to have, like, a 10th frame, it will be the second frame when scrolling down the tab. So yeah, that's kind of annoying. I either had to create folders so the frames will still be in order, or give them file names like A1 and A2. And with the latter, if I reach up to 9, I continue on with that naming scheme but go like B1 and B2 and so forth. Of course, I should probably be smart and just name my single digit frames with 0 at the front of them. But if I reach into the triple digits, then shit will be tedious as hell to organize. But hey, that's my own hang-up. Anyways, once I had all my frames, both VN frames and CG frames, into the program, I set the audio first into the timeline, unlike with Movie Maker. And after that, I gently insert the frames into the timeline as I go. Of course, in both cases, I do set up an opening and ending sequence because it's like that with anime and every Western cartoon. It was common practice within the Fanime community to have an opening and ending for your series. Mainly with copyrighted music, but there are rare cases of someone making their own music for their series. But yeah, it's OP first, then the episode itself, and then the ending. And after that process, I export the episode, so it'll be ready to upload to YouTube. This is for those that do want to make this similarly to how I make my stuff, so... Consider this the only tutorial part of this video. After you or someone else gets the edit on long after you got your sprites done, I highly recommend you do this in order first. 
Well, mostly in order. One. Start making the VN frames first. For me, personally, these are a good indicator for how the story will go. Two. Sketch out the CG frames, or even animation frames if you're making an animated scene. Yes, I did say just sketch out because it is important to the next two steps. Now I'll say this before we get to the next part. If you feel differently, you could switch one and two respectively, if you feel more comfortable with that. But these next two steps are actually important if you keep them in this order. Three, compile them all together in whatever video software you have. I personally recommend HitFilm Express, but if that's too much for you, you could use any other software, whether it's free, something you have to pay for, or that it's Adobe, so it's okay to pirate. And four, line art and color the CG frames, and possible animation frames, if, yeah. Yes, I did leave this after compiling the frames together in a video editing software. Because once those are done and probably rendered if you go the extra mile, they are already good to go in the program itself, and they will be ready to export. Possible 5. CG only. Set up the backgrounds if you already have them in a separate track. Now, this step is not necessary if you already have the background in the CG scenes. That said, if the CGs are in the transfer in BG, then yes, it is important. But once you get all these steps, and maybe the possible fifth step if circumstances be fucked, then the episode slash one shot slash pilot is ready to export. Now, I will say this. Up until recently, I have not used this method. Like, while I have started VN frames, I sketch line art and color as I go when it comes to, like, CG frames. However, during the production of Maruka's Adventures episode 6 and 7, I felt that the OG method was a little more stress-inducing than the more recent method. So yeah, to recap, it's VN frames, sketch out the CG frames first, composite it together in a video editor, line it and color the CG frames, possibly add the backgrounds for the CG frames, and export. Hopefully, if you want to do the similar type of method that I do, this ordering will be viable. I also hope that this is also viable for those working on mobile devices. And yeah, that's how I make bullshit. Like I said though, my way of making a visual novel styled series is not the only way. And to signify that, I have someone else to talk about their ways of making a visual novel style series. Well, it kinda. Take it away, Doodle Tones. So, Juicy wanted me to briefly go over my experiences making a visual novel style web series, and I'm not too certain what there is to say, but I'll, I'll do my best. So, first thing for me was figuring out how many sprites I was going to need to make. For me, I have 37 characters in my story, some with outfit variations, so that added to the final amount that I needed to make, but after figuring that out, I needed to figure out poses and expressions, to which I figured a neutral, a happy, a mad, a puzzled, or confused, uh, a sad, and a scared or spooked reaction would be good enough. You know, very simple stuff. I also determined five unique poses would also give me more than enough assets to cycle through without everything feeling too repetitive. So that was at least 1,110 sprites to create, not including outfit variations. But a lot of my characters are asymmetrical, so that doubled my required amount. I think I ultimately came to the realization that I was going to do roughly 3,000 character sprites total, which... Good god. So, getting started was a little shaky at first. I started just by drawing out all of the sprites individually. I wound up lining all 60 of my first character, Annabelle's sprites, but figured that was going to take too much work by the time that I reached Beth, my second character. For Beth, all the way up until Elizabeth, my main character, I wound up redrawing the head for a lot of the sprites, but drawing the body as its own separate thing to at least keep a level of consistency. Though the head shape was kind of a little weird in various sprites. It's not as consistent as I would have liked it to be. So I wound up finding the perfect method for me to mass produce sprites, drawing the body and head as a separate thing from the face on its own, which made the process 
while still a long and arduous process that I spent my summer on, still saved me a lot more time than how it would have been just drawing all 3,000 sprites by hand. Then there was backgrounds, which <laughs> I won't lie, I've never been good at. So instead of racking my head around learning how to draw a proper background myself, I just wound up making a 3D model in Google SketchUp that I wound up tracing over. I got lazy at this point, okay? I did 3,000 character sprites, don't judge me too hard. The UI was easy, uh, I don't really do a whole ton with my UI, it's just like a little text box. It's easy stuff. Uh, and then all that was left was editing it all together, which mostly just comprised of copy and pasting keyframes into Sony Vegas to keep character stills in place and using a Prototype Titler custom preset to type out all the text for the characters to say. I didn't really feel like I had much in the realms of things to talk about, but I hope this is what Joseva wanted, regardless. Mind you, this was my first time doing anything like this at all, so I, I hope this was a good insight to the newbie mentality, regardless. Thank you, Doodle. That was very informative. Honestly, 3,000 sprites does sound like a lot, but I'm glad you kind of got through with it. By the way, if you are curious of what she is talking about, I will link her series in the description down below. <laughs> you did not hear that. Anyways, if you want to create a series that has voice acting and visuals, but have no desire to animate, or at the very least, feeling a little bit scared to animate, I personally recommend the VN style format. As for labels, honestly, whether you call your VN series a web series, a web cartoon, or even a fanime, it's whatever. At the end of the day, it's your prerogative what you call your series at this point. Hell, if you really want to, it doesn't have to be the only format you could do. You could practice animating with one series while having another series be in a VN format. There is no rule that you shouldn't have more than one project. Though it is recommended to take care of yourselves while doing this shit. Don't do what my dumbass did in the past by overworking yourselves, please! And with that... That is it. This is Chibi of YouTube signing out. Goodbye!